Hi everyone, welcome. Hope you're all doing well today. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Armaspec SRS or Stealth Recoil Spring. I've got mine pulled out right here for you to take a look at. We'll talk about why you'd want this system over a traditional buffer spring and weight, as well as some of the benefits. I'll show you how to tune the system by changing the buffer weights and why you'd want to do that, and as well as just how easy it is to install. I'll also go over my impressions given the testing I've done so far. Now, why would you want to purchase the Armspec SRS over a traditional buffer spring assembly? Well, there are really a couple reasons why you would. The first being having a captured buffer spring assembly. You get rid of that annoying noise, sometimes referred to as the cheese grater sound, that's made when the buffer spring rides against the inside of the buffer tube. The only way to get rid of that is by running a captured buffer spring assembly. Now the second and frankly more important reason to purchase the Armaspec SRS is recoil mitigation. By running a dual or two-stage buffer spring assembly, you're able to reduce felt recoil significantly over a traditional buffer spring setup. Now the third benefit to the Armaspec Stealth Recoil Spring is the ability to tune the system by simply changing out the weights and spacer, which I'll show you how to do here in just a second. Now the Armaspec SRS comes in a number of different weights, starting with the SRSC, which is for carbine, and that's at a 3.3 ounce weight, the SRSH, which is 3.8 ounces, the SRS H2 at 4.7 ounces, and the SRS H3, which is 5.6 ounces. Now they also offer the SRS 9 at 6.4 ounces, which is for your nine millimeter AR platforms, as well as an SRS BB at 5.7 ounces, which is for weapons chambered in 458 SOCOM, 450 Bushmaster, 50 Beowulf and the likes. Now for this discussion, we'll be focusing on just the SRSC, H, H2, and H3, which are the standard weights used in a traditional AR-15 platform. Now, why would you even want to change the weights in the first place? Why not just buy one and be done with it, right? Well, as many of you out there know that have built your own AR-15s, sometimes your first choice isn't always the perfect one. I know this firsthand with this product. I originally selected the Armaspec SRS H2, which comes with a 4.7 ounce weight for my epic 10 and a half inch AR-15 pistol build, which I've got right here. However, on my first trip out, I quickly discovered I had picked the wrong weight for my build. I found out while trying to tune my Seekins Precision adjustable gas block. No matter how far open the gas block was, I simply couldn't get the bolt carrier group to lock back on an empty magazine. After thoroughly inspecting the gas system and finding no faults, I was led to one conclusion. My buffer weight was just too heavy. So instead of having to purchase another Armaspec SRS system, I just ordered the lower weights, getting both the SRSC at 3.3 ounces and the SRS-H at 3.8 ounces. And now we're gonna go ahead and change the weight and the spacer on my Armaspec, Armaspec Stealth Recoil Spring together. So let's go ahead and change camera views and we'll get started. All right, so we've gone ahead and changed views here so we can show you just how to change these weights out on your Armaspec Stealth Recoil Spring. So what you'll need to complete this job is obviously you'll need the Armaspec SRS out of the weapon. You're gonna need a 3 30 seconds Allen key, preferably two if you've got two. I found it works best if you use two, um, but if not, the next size down will work for a trick I'll show you here in a second. You're gonna need obviously your new weights. We've got the SRSC weight and spacer and the SRSH. The one that is on the Stealth Recoil Spring right now is an H2. Um, some grease and some Loctite. And that's what you'll need to complete the job. So I'll show you real quick. Um, first what you do is you're gonna take and push this down against the spring. You're gonna see 
if I can show you, there's a hole in this rod. Hopefully you can see that hole right there. What you're going to do is take one of your Allen keys and stick it in that hole. And then you can let off on the spring. And then you take your 330 seconds Allen key and you can unthread the little bolt at the end. And then you'll press down on the spring again, pull that Allen key out, and you can let up. And you can pull off the weight and the first stage spring and the second stage spring. Now, since we are changing from an H2 to either an H or a C weight and spacer, we have to change the spacer as well. So we'll stick the Allen key back in that hole to hold it for us. And then we'll unthread the screw for the spacer. And I've noticed that it sometimes gets stuck in there. So you just have to th thread it out of the spacer. Because on the, the H2 and the H3, they come with a one inch spacer. On the H and the C, they come with inch and a quarter spacers. So we're actually gonna be putting on the C weight and spacer. We'll set aside the H2. The first thing we'll do is take some blue Loctite and dab a little on this screw. And then with the Allen key, you can thread it in. You don't need to crank on it too hard. You don't want to strip anything out, but you want it snug. So I like to get it pretty snug on there. Now the next thing, you put a little, whoops, a little bit of Loctite on that next bolt, get that ready. But the next thing I like to do is actually put some grease on this guide rod since it has the spring riding against it. So I just put, get a rag ready, a generous amount of grease. I don't know if this is necessarily required or not, but you could use gun oil as well. I'm using TW25B gun grease. And slide that spring on. And then I like to have some grease on this guide rod as well. For the other, for the first stage spring. Slide that in, wipe the extra grease off our fingers, and then we can put the weight on. And then same thing we did before, we're gonna press it all the way down till we can get our Allen key in that hole. And then we're gonna take our bolt that has the thread locker on it, blue thread locker, Preferably, you don't want to use the red stuff in case you got to change out this weight more than once. And you snug that down nice and tight. And there you have it. It's all assembled. I like to put a little bit of lube on the 
outside of the weight because that actually rides against the buffer tube. So, and then I'll show you just how easy it is to install this in the weapon. Go ahead and move these weights out of the way, weights and spacers. Now, if by chance you're changing from a C to an H weight, you don't need to change the spacer at the end. They're both inch and a quarter. Or if you're changing from an H2 to an H3, same thing goes. They're in one inch spacers, so you don't need to worry about changing the, the spacer on that. You just change the weight. Hopefully you guys can get a good look there, but you just simply slide it in. It's best if your trigger is down in the fire position so it's out of the way, and then you just slide that in there. You don't need a retaining spring and pin uh, like you do with the traditional buffer spring and buffer. Um, you can run one if you like. They do sell a proprietary one for this system. Um, Arma spec does. Uh, I've chose to not run it, so it's not needed. You just press back a little bit on the buffer, close it down, close the pin. And there you go. And there you have it. And that's how you change the weights and the spacers on the Arma spec. SRS or stealth recoil spring. So let's go ahead and jump back up top and we'll wrap this up. And we're back up top. So what are the impressions given the testing that I've done so far? And why did I purchase this in the first place? Why didn't I just run a traditional tried and true buffer spring assembly and buffer? Well, being that I was going for an epic AR pistol build, I knew I wanted to run a captured buffer spring assembly. Originally, I was going to go with the JP Silent captured spring system. However, I ultimately chose the Armaspec SRS because I thought it to be a comparable product at a 43% price savings. Possibly even higher because I would have likely purchased the builder kit, which is an additional $30 more from JP. So far, my testing has been comparing it against a standard 16-inch AR-15 and two other AR-15 pistols that are all equipped with the traditional buffer spring and buffer. And I can tell you that without a doubt, the Armaspec SRS is much quieter, completely eliminating the dreaded twang sound. Felt recoil is significantly lower with the Armaspec SRS, as well as having an overall smoother feeling action is what people describe it best, uh, which I believe is due to the dual stage spring system. Now, should you go out and purchase one for your build? Well, I'll tell you this. I anticipate the Armaspec SRS going in all of our future builds that we do here at Ballistic Society. So take that with a grain of salt. All right, you know the drill. If you happen to like any part of today's video, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, go and do that now so that you'll be kept in the loop on any future videos that we release. And feel free to comment with any questions that you may have. Train hard, have fun, stay safe. That's all for today. I'm out.